All right, so it's very helpful when we look at submissions to invert positions sometimes and see how they look from the bottom and the top. It helps us understand how the positions, which are submissions, right, are working in different scenarios. If you're going to get to the point in the flight where you're looking to apply the submission, it should be because the opponent is so disbalanced or confused or exhausted that it's not possible for him to successfully defend it. Now, that all depends on your philosophy of fighting. Another idea would be that you're so good at the submission because you've trained it so many times, even when he's still relatively sharp, you sneak something in around his, his defenses, right? You beat his best defense. Sometimes you may be doing a submission and you may have the position that you use to establish it reversed. One very classic example of this would be, I'm mounted on Charlie, and I would open up the collar and insert the hand, right, and then the second hand goes underneath, and I would start to do the front choke, right, I would start to do the front choke like this, and then Charlie would somehow roll me over. But I would keep the choke and finish it from the guard position, right? That's one example. Another example would be perhaps he sticks his arms up and as I start to sit for the arm bar, he rolls me over. Either way, whatever. Right, so then I just hold it and go underneath and finish from the guard. Right, so as you are noticing, just because your basic position becomes changed doesn't mean you have to abandon the submission you're on. We know from some of our training that there is a triangle from the guard, and that's more common than the triangle from the mount. But if somehow we fall over and part of his attempt to escape from our guard involves him inverting us, we can then take the triangle from the mount. Or in the triangle from the mount, if we're attempting that and he bucks us over, we can maintain it and keep it and finish it from the guard, right? So everything is invertible, <coughs> including the baseball chip. So let's imagine that I'm kneeling next to him and I have this side position set up and then I sit like this and then he starts to push me and I move, you know, like this to the knee and the belly and then from here I turn down and I start to set my hands and everything's going well and then I make this mistake, my head crosses the center line. My head crosses the center line so he rolls me off. And now I have to end up putting him in my guard. But look, I don't need to change the choke. I don't need to change the choke. My hand position can stay exactly like it is. This is a very interesting finish because from here, I actually hope to bait him. I hope to bait him to pass towards the palm up side, right? So what I'd like to do is maybe just open the guard and stick that leg down and get him to move. And as he does, watch what I do. I just turn and look what happens. The same exact baseball choke, but it's upside down. The elbow drops in like this, right? But to create extra torque, I roll my body away. So what's in effect happening here is that from the top position, when I drop the elbow inside and I put my hips on the ground and laid my pressure on top of the arms, that created enough weight and constriction on the neck that he felt like he had to tap. Here, he's on top, so I don't have gravity on my side anymore. So I have to make my arms more straight so that they cover a greater surface area. And I do that by rolling away, like this. And the more I roll, the tighter it gets. Yeah. <laughs> All right? So the basic application would be, from the side mount, please. <clears throat> maybe we're in the knee and the belly, maybe not. Maybe we're just like this, and we get too excited and put our head too far over here, and he goes under my legs, right? And rolls me over. So I somehow scramble and get to the guard because I want to maintain that first, right? I don't want to end up in a scenario where he then crawls to my side mount or can smash me from the top and hold my head. And even though I still have this grip, it doesn't matter anymore. I'd like to recover the guard first because that's my safety spot. From here, I know I can reevaluate and look. But now if I'd like to bait him into a creative submission, I can open the guard and drop the leg. And when he starts to pass, I just roll away. Right, drop the elbow inside and roll away. All right?
One hand would be up, the other hand would be thumb down. Maybe I'm knee in the belly, and my head crosses the center line. So as he rolls <coughs> me and we fall, I can replace the guard and just evaluate here. And you know, he doesn't really feel that threatened from this position. This one he won't like, right? When the hand is in the collar, he's always going to be monitoring the second hand. And he's not going to let me put it in because he knows one hand is no problem, two hands big problem. But like this, it's different. He doesn't feel like anything's going on. He just feels like I'm holding his knee, maybe like that. Maybe he didn't see from the bottom that this baseball choke had already been established. So we set the hands just like they were. And now I try to bait him to pass towards the palm up side, towards the choking side. Right? Maybe I just drop the guard open like this. And as he goes, look, I drop the elbow in. And then to make the choke tight, I roll my own body away like this. OK? Does that make sense? OK, let's try that. 